Hey, hey, it's Jason ODB, the Lincoln Addict, hitting you with another one of my eBay listing reviews. And I'm having fun doing these. And uh, I have done two prior. So hopefully you get some tips from these videos. Remember, I'm not uh, doing this to try to bring any um, you know hate towards the sellers. Oftentimes, folks that are selling these cars may not know a lot about them, or maybe they just got one from someone maybe that passed away or they purchased one and they're looking to flip it. So without further ado, let's jump in. 1967 Lincoln Continental Convertible. We can see here they do have a few photos and just kind of scanning through these first few, I can tell you it's cool that they do have a few photos underneath the car. That's a good thing. The first thing I look at here is the price. So reserve is not met. Uh, 34 bids. So obviously this is an active uh, posting. The reason why I wanted to get this one out is there's only 16 hours left. So I'm going to try to have this one out Monday morning. That would give you potential time to view this and even be able to go look at this live auction, if you will. Located in, is it Leander? Leander, Texas? L-E-A-N-D-E-R, Texas, right? So it gives you an idea of where you're at and uh, in terms of shipping. You also see that he has 363 ratings. Uh, the first thing I always do is, uh, you know, I'll kind of take a quick look at these photos, but I'll scroll down and you see not a crazy description, but this one really tells a story. It's been in storage per this gentleman 40 plus years. It hasn't seen the road since 1977. That's not necessarily a bad thing. We'll talk about why. The, to the car, he states, is in total, complete need of restoration, which I would agree cars in this condition Absolutely, that's probably where it's at, right? It's been painted once early in its life, but it's straight and rust-free, lifelong Texas car with minor tweaks uh, to the bumpers. That's important, so we'll talk about this in a few minutes, the, the tweaks to the bumpers. Obviously, when he says it's been painted once, uh, I assume he means like a respray. We'll see if we can kind of pick that up in the photos. He did clean it up. He did get a few things working. He talks about he went through some of the window and window switches, even got them to work except for the right rear, and you'll see that in the photos. He did get the top functioning via the key switch. So in 6667, they do have uh, the switch near the gas filler, and that is wired right into the pump, and it kind of bypasses the switch that's up on the dash. So we'll talk about that. The car is almost fully equipped with cruise headlight dimmer, 8-track, and the usual power accessories. Uh, this one's a little different, right? So he's saying that he only accepts cash or wire. Uh, typically with these, I think, you know, since eBay owns PayPal under the same conglomerate, typically that's an option. But, you know, when you're dealing with higher dollar stuff, you're probably looking at typically paying this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here. Uh, the, the thing I would start with is you look at this car and you go, okay, yeah, it's not, um, maybe pretty to the eye. I would, as I've said in other videos, I would often go towards a car like this that, you know, hasn't been really too much tinkered with that you could bring back. And depending on what your budget is, you may be able to get in at the, the price of this car at a good deal. And if you're looking at spending a good amount of money on the purchase and then over the course of a few years, maybe a father-son, father-daughter restoration, just maybe you want to learn about these cars and that type of thing. So what I'm seeing here is obviously, you know, the paint is very oxidized, which I'm not necessarily uh, against. I, I kind of like that look, that patina look. Uh, you do see some body damage here, and it's not uncommon to see this. These are big cars, and, uh, you know, back in the day, you know, I'm sure little fender benders happen. I'm also looking here at the bumper. Typically, you're not going to see the first photo, a rear three-quarter shot. But what I'm looking here is to see if there's any denser dings. We've talked about this in the past that if you leave these cars idling with no one in it and someone without their foot on the brake, these cars can jump into the uh, and jump into reverse. Nathan Wilson's spoken about that. I have as well. And a lot of times there's going to be a tell right around here in the bumper. You'll see a ding, uh, or a good a good solid one, right? Not something minor. And what that often means is that the car did jump into reverse, okay? That um, is of significance because the bumper could be damaged where it's going to cost more to be re-chromed. Sometimes you'll see it pushed in, that type of thing. Uh, 
but you're seeing the normal, uh, you know, stuff that you're going to see on these cars. You know, this is going to need to be all polished out, probably re-chromed on these rear bumpers. On the last video I did, I talked about this little piece right here. Okay, this you can see is kind of torn, very old looking. That's more of an aesthetic piece, but I can tell you a car in this condition, it's going to need all the weather stripping. So up here around the uh, deck lid, all of the doors, you name it. And again, I mentioned in the last video that can be pretty costly, but again, that's something over the course of time uh, you can by all means, um, you know, bring back if you will. Okay, what I'm seeing here is this gap between the lower uh, grill. Uh, so it's very, very squished right in here. So it's telling me, and based upon what I see here, um, obviously this 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 car has been in little fender benders, uh, bumpers tweaked, things like that. Not necessarily the end of the world. It could be the bumper needs to be replaced, um, some dents and dings removed, or the bracketry that's on each side. Oftentimes, that's going to take the brunt force. And a lot of times, if you just replace those brackets, uh, if the bumper's not too bad, um, it'll be nice. Uh, you could get it rechromed. Um, I've seen people just swap the whole bumper and the the bracketry, and they're good. But you can see here, very oxidized paint. Um, you'd be surprised. A lot of this paint can be brought back to make look make it look pretty damn good. But when you start kind of seeing some of this in here and some of the body damage we saw, more than likely, if you ended up with this car, you could drive it uh, in this condition, maybe clean it up some weekend project, and then over the course of time, decide that you're um, maybe going to restore it. You can see it, it is missing a couple T-I-N-E-N, -E so the E. TAL, it's missing those. Um, could be costly, but you you can get those. Uh, when he talked about the high options on sixty six sixty seven, right here, you see this is where the um, the headlight dimmer is at. So I often, for some reason, call it the optical eye. Um, I believe the same company made it um, for forty and Chevy. That technology in the earlier sixties had it up here on the dash. But uh, in 66, 67, it was moved here. It does have the hood ornament, which is cool. And again, you can kind of see the rest. Um, hubcaps, wide white wall tires. You see, you know, and then you see down here. I don't know if there's a key in there right there or if it's just a piece of plastic or something sticking out. But when he talked about getting the top working, he got it working from the switch back here, which was an option. Uh, this, again, here is going to tell, um, you know, wow, you know, the paint looks pretty you know pretty rough right in the truck world and and a lot of times in the car world you hear the word patina a lot uh, you know again you could leave this car this way if you wanted but um, I would be a little suspect here um, just to make sure that this is this is just you know the paint flaking off based upon the way how tight this peak molding is I'm guessing there's really no front end damage here and in, in, in terms of these fenders uh, you can see here the bumper doesn't look as bad to me. This gap looks really tight in here. I'm not used to really seeing that, but it could just be some minor adjustments. But really, when you look at the bumper ends, how tight it is here to where the peak molding kind of comes down, um, it's pretty tight in there, and, and it definitely needs some adjustment or, or something's going on. Again, not the end of the world. Uh, just seeing more here with the paint. You see the other hubcaps are on. Again, you can kind of see how close the bumper stuff is. But I would say so far what I'm seeing, it doesn't look like other than the typical, uh, you know, 60, 70 tiny little minor accidents or, or bumper dings and things like that. It's probably what's caused um, some of this not to be maybe um, in the exact spot it would have been from the factory. Okay. Uh, looking down here, you can kind of see pretty straight overall. Some cool angles, different angles. Um, you can kind of see the interior. Obviously, starting to see is white. You can see the crack here that I mentioned in the other um, uh, video when you're dealing with 66, 67, 68, and I think even 69. But typically, right there, you'll see that crack. Uh, the top doesn't look as bad. Uh, this is obviously stored inside. So, you know, this is the type of top that you could probably clean up and not have that huge expense at that point uh, in time. Okay, what you're seeing here is I'm looking at the gapping between, again, same thing I did on the front, just to kind of see. Obviously, I think this bumper would need to be, 
it could be deceiving with this piece here, but um, obviously I think some minor adjustments. It's got the, uh, these are the reverse lights down here. And then of course in 66, 67, I think even at 68, they have these kind of decorative covers here over the lenses. I'm also looking at the deck lid just to kind of see how bad it is. And I can tell you this deck load looks pretty damn good. And uh, I, I'll do a video in the future about these deck lids, but really what you want to know is they do tend to get rust holes in them. So um, that's something you always want to look for. Again, here we can see the switch 6667 feature. Cashman talked about that in the Jay Leno garage video. And that's the cool thing. You can put the key in. You can um, open the deck lid from there. Let's say you're going to put a golf bag, groceries. This, this was a feature. Contrary to some, uh, they think that it was an auto type thing. It wasn't. It was not automatic. You did have to add that. And those are kind of sought after. There's some people that want to add that to their car. Um, you know, there's some people that have one that the switch may not be working. Um, there is debate sometimes if like, well, hey, it's not working at the dash, but I could put the key in here and it works. Um, from my confirmation, from what I've talked to people, this is wired like directly over to the pump. So, um, you know, I have seen it where this will not work here at the dash, but it works, uh, here at the, uh, the rear of the car. Uh, you can see more photos. What I'm looking at here is the dog leg and you can see how straight this rear door is. And again, you do typically kind of start, start, start to see a little bit of what you're seeing here where it doesn't look like perfectly symmetrical. But to me, this looks really solid. Like, like this is probably all original here and it's good that you don't see really any, um, uh, you know, bubbling and things like that. And I'm also looking up here all the time to, to see, is this front fender real bad? Uh, there could be leaves and things that kind of get, you know, down in these areas sometimes, not necessarily in the Lincolns, but on a lot of cars. And you just always want to look in this area and even these rear quarter panels. The cool thing is a lot of Lincolns, you can actually in the trunk, you can kind of look real far down in these quarter panels just to make sure they're not kind of bondoed up. All right. Same kind of stuff we're looking at here. Now, underneath the car, this is a typical car that I have seen. I've owned a 67. Um, I would not be afraid of any of this kind of surface rust, what I would call it. Um, a lot of this is, is, is going to be pretty crunchy, right? A lot of this could be blown apart, sandblasted, powder coated, whatever you want to do. And this stuff will look fantastic. Okay. Um, but what I'm seeing here is everything is all solid. All looking back in the floor pans from everything I can see, everything's good there. Um, you see a lot of oil buildup on the oil pan. This is something you're going to see on a lot of these cars. They leak, they leak, they leak. So, um, you know, this is all kind of dried stuff. And again, that just shows when it was driven, uh, those 70, whatever thousand miles, um, from think about it from 67 to about 77 when it was apparently stored that's 10 years it's about 7,000 8,000 miles a year so you know it got driven and all that stuff's kind of dried up uh this is stuff you could easily clean up or you know leave as is uh floor pans looking good again this is all typical stuff on the leaf springs um, if you were going to leave this stock you know you might want to start getting in replacing leaf springs and suspension stuff but that would not be really um, your main focus at this point. You've got a ding here in this long trim piece. And again, you can have polishers. They'll they'll take, they specialize in that, taking that stuff out, the dents and dings. Uh, here, you can kind of see a little bit of surface rust. This is all solid. These are the actual floor pans here. Um, and um, my guess is the 10 years that it was driven, you know, it it didn't see a lot of water kind of getting in there. Uh, here, uh, confirmation 73,895. I would say that that is probably accurate. You see here, um, the interior obviously needs a real good cleaning. And if you're into this stuff like I am, you know, this would be a car that, you know, you could easily get and, and really start enjoying in terms of cleaning it up, seeing some immediate results, start getting the parts you need, things like that. So... Uh, down here is the speed control. I always tend to forget the 67 I had did not have this. So the speed control is there. And uh, I do believe this one's the tilt column from yeah, what I can tell. Uh, you see the kick panels are still in there. I start to kind of look at all the interior to see, um, you know, how, how much is there, how much is potentially missing. You can see it's a very dingy. So obviously, you know, the barn type environment where, um, you know, moisture and things like that. 
uh, we're getting in. You can see the right here. I start to look at you know how dirty is all this stuff, and again, this car is pretty pretty filthy. But this is one that could easily uh, be brought back. Uh, this seat over here, a uh, little bit different than the one I did the last video. This one does not have the power headrest, so you see, um, it's it's just like the uh, driver seat. It's all white. Um, this stuff, you'd be amazed at at people that restore leather. Um, you know, more than likely, whoever gets this car, if they do a restoration, this is all going to get redone. So don't get me wrong. But I mean, there are people that could come in here and kind of fix some of this stuff and actually make it look where it's pretty damn nice. Uh, that's cool because you retain some of the originality. Uh, a lot of this could be cleaned professionally or, um, you know, through watching YouTube videos. But uh, the bottom line is probably the last thing on your mind if you're buying this one. Very crusty is the word I like to use. Uh, a lot of this stuff, I mean, this car, he obviously got it fired up, I believe is what he said. Um, these cars, it's been reminded to me, Blair has told me this, Blair Farmer, it's not really on the outside, which you see, it's really on the inside. And I know that that's kind of cliche, but these engines will run and... Um, you know, this, this isn't to be anything that, that you could, you know, that you should be worried about. Now, um, on mine, I pulled the engine out and a lot of the stuff was sandblasted, powder coated, cleaned, degreased, hot tanked, you name it. You could make this engine bay look like a million bucks by all means, or you could get it running and driving, enjoying it, and then do things over the course of time. I do believe this fuel pump is going to need to be replaced. I think it is a three port from one of the photos I saw. And um, again, these fan sh the fan shrouds do tend to uh, break. Uh, so that, that one looks pretty good. The opposite side look here. And again, I always like to hone in. There is a hose missing, I believe. Um, it kind of comes right in here. I know where it goes, but it's kind of hard to tell on this one. I think this is a three port. But I can see how crusty this is. This is more than likely going to need to be rebuilt, and you're going to have a couple hundred dollar cost in that if it is a three-port, a little bit more if you need to get a three-port carb, or excuse me, not carb, uh, fuel pump. Uh, a lot of times when guys will get these cars running, you'll see that they'll put a little fuel tank here, and they'll run the fuel right into it, okay? That's normal to get these cars running because the fuel lines are probably clogged. The tank is probably nasty. The pickup uh, in the tank for the sending unit is probably just disgusting. So uh, more than likely for him to get this started, he probably had a little gas tank here with the fuel fed right into here, which goes through the filter, goes through this line here into the carb. Of course, if, um, if th the fuel pump was just disgusting, he would have taken off the air cleaner, which does not look like it's been taken off yet in this photo he would have taken off the air cleaner and he would have poured fuel down there and babied it with fuel uh to get it to get it cranked um so something i wanted to point out here is the door the door tag so um the vin the vin tag if you will so 74a is four door vert um, you got the color, which is medium blue metallic. And then the thing, I don't want to go over all of these, but the DSO 26 is for Memphis. So I do believe in the description, he said, it's always been a Texas car. Um, you know, it could have very well, um, been sold in Memphis and the people lived in Texas or moved to Texas, whatever. But this DSO is uh two six, which is Memphis. You can Google this information, um, Lincoln Continental DSO, and you'll land on a page that will give you all of those different codes, okay? Uh, you're probably thinking, why does that matter? Well, it, you know, did, did the car go, was it a Southern California car? Was it one that was in Wisconsin, uh, an area where they had a heavy use of salt and really rough, rent, really rough winters, things like that? Okay, so a couple things here. Again, he says that he got the top working. That is fantastic. He's also showing you that it's working because it's in cycle. The other thing is, and we saw this in one of the other photos for um, those that were looking, he has another Lincoln Continental, so 64. This is a, um, it looks like a beautiful car. That means that he knows his way around a Lincoln a little bit, hence is why he was able to probably get the top working and things like that. Here you see the right rear window, which he mentioned is not working. And you see the uh, the top latched. 
Uh, here you can see he did take off. Um, he disconnected these guys here. So um, the importance there is, you know, was it at the beginning? You know, w was this part working whenever he did the whole thing or did he open it? Um, which you can see here, it looks like they were connected when he did this. So um, that's telling me that he did get it to, to cycle. Uh, here you got the original floor mats. These are hard to find, so that's cool. You got the original carpet kit, I can tell. And then 66, 67, again, they did add this in. Cashman would uh, reinforce that to folks. That That's why you got to add this into the earlier year Lincolns. More on that in the future. But again, this would end up all getting ripped out. You'd put in a new one. You could steam clean this and stuff, but I don't really know that it's worth the time. Uh, certainly, I'm kind of more of an original guy, so I may try that. Um, just to save, you know, maybe money if you were looking to do other things with this, but, um, that's, you know, th that's going to be added to the list basically, in my opinion, you can see here the weather stripping. Okay. You always want to look at the weather stripping on these cars and you'll see it is horrendous. That is to be expected. It's not the end of the world. Steel rubber can get you squared away. They're one of our key partners on the podcast, S-T-E-E-L-E rubber.com. They sell the best items in the country, hands down, really in the world, and you can get all of this stuff from them, okay? So I'm going to hit escape on my keyboard, and I'm going to scroll down to here, okay? I, I like to come down here to see are there any other photos because a lot of times – you can um, you could scroll down here and then you're gonna see more information. And I thought that they linked out to their website. And I think on this one, I may be getting it confused with another one. So this is all that they have, okay? So it talks about um, you know some of the key things. These are just really uh, you know just normal stuff right here. You've got the VIN number. Uh, that we saw in the door plate, it's good to verify that that it is the same number. Um, the thing that I would tell you is if you end up buying a car like this, okay, you've got to do, it's kind of like, I hate to say this, it's like the Wheel of Fortune, right? R-S-T-L-N-E, they give that to you. It is a given, right, at the end. This uh, car or these Lincolns, there, there are things that are a given that you have to do, all right? And, you know, you're talking about the timing gear on the engines, you know, something that's been sitting this long, you're going to probably need to do, have their water pump rebuilt. All of the brakes are going to have to be gone through, right? If you know that kind of work, you can do it. But front and rear, uh, this has disc brakes on it. Um, the engine bay is going to, you know, need to be kind of uh, cleaned up by all means. You're probably going to have a lot of gaskets and seals that need to be replaced, uh, possibly pulling the engine to make it easier. Um you're going to need to redo pretty much everything as far as the lines go. You know, a lot of these lines are probably going to blow out for the for the top. Um, although he's got it working, you know, you, you, you can't depend on this stuff just, you know, working forever. Uh, a lot of these switches here for the, for the top, a lot of those are going to have to be gone through and cleaned and or replaced. Relays for the windows are going to be key, right? Um, a lot of those are right back here behind the, the seat. The relays are going to have to be replaced more than likely. Uh, the seat, or excuse me, the windows, although that they're working in most cases, they're probably going to be gunked up the tracks, right? Cashman would talk about the grease turning to peanut butter. All of those are going to have to be cleaned. If you're, if you got any mechanics, um, you know, kind of about you, you get your hands dirty, you can do the stuff. You can watch videos from like Nathan Wilson. Um, but if you're one that's maybe not inclined to do that kind of stuff, you know, you're going to pay a specialist to, to have to do all that. Now, if you were able to get this car for a good deal, you know, uh, it's bumped up in the last few hours from 16 some odd thousand uh, to 18, which you see here. Uh, if you could get the car for a good deal, you might be able to put 20 to 25 to 40,000 in it and make it a really, really, really nice car. Now, you might be saying, wow, like really that much? By all means, you could get this thing home. You could kind of go through the brakes, go through the fuel system. If you're a mechanic, you know, you could get a lot of the stuff working, maybe the top not working perfect, and cruise it around and really enjoy it. Uh, clean up the paint, uh, do a nice buff job on it and things like that. Get some steel wool, um, you know, and really clean up the bumpers. And this car would probably 
make a great YouTube video on cleaning it up and getting it just running and driving and things like that. But if you really want to make this car a nice car and you start saying, hey, let's do the manifold gaskets, uh, let's say – the manifolds crack like they sometimes do, then you got to get new ones. You know, uh, let's say steering, you're looking at $500. Um, if the steering pump has to be rebuilt, that's more money, right? It's really as much money as you want to spend, or you can afford to spend. These cars are going to take the money. Okay. But you will see if you go on eBay, you'll see these cars sell. There's one on there and I'll probably do a video in the next few days for a hundred grand for a really, really, really nice 66, 67, okay? Now, not saying that they're necessarily worth that. It really depends on the condition, but I can tell you this car could be a really nice car, okay? So bottom line, what I would say to take away from this is you can get cars for a good deal. Don't overpay for something like this because you got to plan on spending thousands of dollars to get it to where it needs to be, okay? Uh, Blair Farmer is in the the Clearwater area. He takes on jobs like this. Uh, he's got a, a couple of very long uh, long term projects now that are going to be leaving soon. He takes on projects like this. Uh, Lincoln Land does as well to a certain extent. The mechanical stuff. I don't want to necessarily speak for them, but I know they have a very very long wait list. Okay, so those things are things to keep in mind. I know Mike Moreno is out in California. He bought John Cashman's business. Uh, there are people out there, but just know that if you get a car like this um, and you're not maybe in the uh, the space to be able to restore it yourself, then you know, you're know you going to be looking at a, a hefty price. Uh, lastly, I would say, yeah, you could get it and customize it and swap the motor and things like that. Um, if you get it for a good deal, that's also an option. Uh, the last tip I'll give you is reach out to these sellers, okay? Typically, their phone number is removed from, um, I think it's like an auto thing that eBay does, but um, you can go contact seller and you can message them and say, hey, can I get more photos? Um, do you have a minute for a phone call? My only advice there is do not waste people's time, okay? If you don't think that you're going to be able to buy the car, please don't get on the phone with them and just want to chit-chat and, and, and just go, hey, this is my dream car. I want to get one. Let me ask you everything you know about it because, you know, these guys, and especially him, he's probably looking just to move this car um, and, and you know – you know, they're probably not wanting to jump on the phone and just chit chat. You know, they, they want to find out, Hey, do you want to buy the car? And especially this guy says, Hey, payment via cash or wire. He just wants to move this thing. He may have picked it up from someone for a good deal and he's looking to flip it. You know, that's just the bottom line, but it's in Texas. So if you know anybody looking for a car, there's one. I think that's it. Always look down here to see if there's a website, see if there's more photos. If there is, click it. It'll usually take you over. But on this one, I think this is all they got. Blue Lincoln's on the rise. You know I love these things. Check out Lincoln Attic Podcast any way uh, that you listen to podcasts. I'm Jason ODB. I appreciate you guys uh, rocking with me here. Take care, y'all. Peace. Peace.